Hey y'all. Um, I, I checked periodically and I saw that the AP Physics 1 2021 free response scoring guidelines were up. Um, and I thought it would be nice to just sort of revisit that. It's been a few months. Hope you guys did well on the exam, but I thought I would go ahead and revisit what their scoring guidelines were with kind of the solutions that I eventually had put together after some of you guys had pointed out some corrections. And just to kind of see where where the answers that I had come in, and I like to see how the breakdowns of the points ended up working out for these, so you can kind of have an understanding of the exam or, um, or how they scored everything. So let's look at the short answer number one. This is the one where a lot of people said they they, they said it was the um, I think AP Trevor um, said that this is the the one that it got the lowest number of points, average of like one point something points because the first derivation. If you couldn't do the first derivation, you were probably kind of hosed on this one. So um, here they um, they kind of showed it out here, and um, here's the answer: four H zero cosine theta zero sine theta zero, and that's what I came up with. Once someone pointed out that uh, when I did this, I if you look at back on my video, I had a two here instead of four because I forgot to multiply these these two and these twos together. But four eight zero cosine theta zero sine theta zero. You did not need to simplify it as sine two theta zero as you can see right here. Okay, so you didn't have to do this this part right here. Some people said like it has to be like that, or some, I got some comments saying that, it, that, that I missed that part. But no, you do not have to do that trig substitution. This would have been a perfectly acceptable answer, and that's what I would assume. So, so first of all, you got a one point for using the conservation of energy, which we did. That's how you I found it for using kinematics, vertical components, attempting to find the time the bicycles in the air for correct expression for x zero. So it was, it was three points for this derivation. Okay, so that's like half of the credit right there. So that means a lot of people missed on this derivation if the average was um, uh, like one point something points. Okay, cool. Um, so B, if the vertical distance, then you get, uh, if you double it, you get 12, and, and, and correct answer is 12 cars here. For one, for an answer that justification attempts to use the functional dependence on the horizontal distance on initial height. And two, one point for an answer consistent with the expression derived in part A. So again, this part is consistent. It's um, it's you don't you don't get a point for getting twelve. You got a point whether you got you had the correct dependency on the first equation you derived, and whether you based it on h zero or not. So if you had some weird expression for h zero, as long as you you demonstrated it, and this is the part where it's important. If you couldn't do the derivation, sometimes it's important to just. Make up a derivation. Just say like this is my answer. It's ten h zero squared or something like that, right? Just say like whatever. That that's what it is, right? Make up an, an expression, and then you can get full credit on this if you if you explain what you do from there. Okay, if you just if you just use a, a weird number, but uh, we got twelve. Twelve was correct. Uh, I think I had left off some of these things, these axes labels when I had first done this, but um, looks about the same. It's the correct graph. One point for a linear graph and one point for it starts at positive EY, ends at negative EY. Okay, so first question looks like we did pretty good. Okay, let's look at question two, the experimental design one. This one actually wasn't too hard of a question. I think they even said that a lot of people did well on this question. Um, so here are the breakdown of the points. You got four points here on the first part for measuring the radius or diameter rods with different radii using appropriate tool for measuring force using appropriate tool for plausible practical way to directly indirectly determine F max on a given rod plausible practical. There's a few ways to do it. I, I kind of did this pulling thing. Some people put weights on it and used gravity. Either way is good. Attempting to reduce experimental uncertainty and experiment involves breaking the rods. Okay, so I think we, I don't know, I, I felt pretty good about that. Radius of rod with the ruler, force applied with the spring scale. Um, uh, design experimental procedure. I don't think I, uh, describe the overall procedure. Okay, here's, here's where I wrote the experimental procedure. So I, I did a bunch of things. I think in general, it's pretty flexible on this. As long as you meet these criterias, then you would have gotten full credit for that. Um, okay, so for B, they wanted a straight line graph marked A. That's what we have here. For graph B marked B that is concave up. Uh, graph B that shows quadratic relationship at the correct points. For two graphs that contain the point R0, F0. Uh, oh, yeah, mine, yeah, I, I put the dot there, the solid dot there. I don't know if you can kind of see right there. I did put a solid dot. Um, let me switch to this. I did put a solid dot right here. Um, it, 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 you know, I, I didn't sketch it super well. If I did it on paper, it would have looked a little better probably, but I did put a solid dot there. Cause I, when I did this, I'd put those solid dots on where it was supposed to be quadratic. 
Okay. So I think everything there looks correct. And then here, uh, I don't know. It looks, I eyeball it. looks pretty good. And I just kind of drew a curve. That looks good. You got one point for linear scales with appropriate labels and units. Oh, I didn't put, did I put units? Did I miss up my units? Let me see. Oh, no. Right there on the right. I put units. Okay, cool. I put units uh, for plotting points correctly. Uh, I think I did that right. Drawing a reasonable best fit curve. Okay, you know, like I, I can't freehand on a tablet as well as I can do on paper, but uh, that's fine. Uh, for identifying model B and indicating F max. Oh, this is D. Oh, so that was so that one. For part D, identify model B. Okay, students model B. The relationship between F and R looks more quadratic than linear. For an example, for uh, increases squares or radius. Yeah, okay. I think that's fine. Okay. Uh, number three, let's take a look. So for correct answer, FHTF over MD, you got one point for that. For part two, you just got one point, right or wrong for that one, right? There's nothing you can do. Either you got that right or you got it wrong. Um, for this one, M M S over MD, you get one point. For any game told me the same before and after the collision, one point. Okay, so as long as I did the momentum before and after the collision was the same, and correctly substituting the equation and answer of the form VD over VS, which is what we did here. Uh, this point can only be earned if the first point is earned, so this answer need not be correct to earn, earn this point. Oh, okay, you didn't actually have to get that one right. That's kind of weird. I don't really understand why. What would a wrong answer look like? Just maybe if you messed up some simple algebra, as long as you do two these two things, you would have gotten full credit. Okay, uh, for B, two functions that are straight segments for T to TF. T, uh, sorry, uh, T, uh, two straight segments and begin at the origin have two different positive slopes. Okay, that all looks good here. And horizontal functions over the entire range. You get one point for labeling values on the vertical axis with VD is greater than VS. I labeled those. And the curve is greater than, so, so they give you an example. Here's a perfect example. Now I didn't label the axis. I should have labeled it on the left. I guess that would have been better, but uh, I think they'd still you give you kind of credit. I didn't label the graphs though, DNS. So maybe I lost a point. I, you know, like here you have a separate, um, this point can still be earned if the labels are not on the vertical axis, but clearly indicate that VD greater than VS. Okay, so I did get credit for that. Okay, cool. So I didn't have to explicitly say DNS and VD and VS, as long as it's very clear that VD was greater than VS. Okay, so good. Pretty, pretty good on that one so far. Uh, for C, um, for mathematically representing when MD, VCM is equal to V1, that's what we have right here. Okay, for correctly answer that when medial is less VC, VCM is about zero. Okay, correct. And example response, you just have an explanation. I think my explanations were reasonable for that. Um, for three, using conservation of momentum, which I did here. This is conservation of momentum and the correct answer MDV1 over MB plus MD. Okay. Four, an attempt to use a limiting case reasoning for functional depends with the equation on here. So let's see. So I need to say yes. And um, yeah, you're just explaining. Then you're just explaining for MD. Then the uh, yeah yeah I just explained that when when MD is much greater, then it looks like that, and so that that would just equal. Okay. I think that is uh, fair. I don't think there's anything special about that one. Okay, cool. All right, this is the one where I had to make a second video to explain to people. A lot of people arguing me about about this one, about like you have to prove that uh, blah blah blah. I made a whole video about it. Don't, it's not a huge deal. But um, I did want to see like what I, I wanted to see what they were looking for in an answer. That's the most important thing I want to look at. Want for a for the graph, straight line, straight horizontal line. Okay, that part's fine. Nothing, nothing special there. You got a one point for the first segment, and you got one point for the horizontal segment. Fair enough. Okay, for B, this is the, the tricky one. Okay, so B, one point, indicating that both objects start with the same gravitational potential energy in the object Earth system. Okay, both block and cylinder start with the same gravitational potential energy. So my first sentence was correct. Start with the first point. Second one, for a correct statement about the energy transformations that occur to the cylinder as it travels down the ramp. Okay, what happens? Um, the, so I wrote the block loses some energy due to work done by friction, whereas the cylinder does not lose any energy. Okay. 
Um, and one, a correct statement for the energy transfer of the block. So the block lost energy to friction for indicating that the cylinder's final rotational kinetic energy is equal to the amount of the block's Earth's initial mechanical energy that it dissipated by friction. Okay, so I say at the bottom, they both have the same amount of translational kinetic energy, but the cylinder has rotational kinetic energy. The rotational kinetic energy of the cylinder is equal to the work done by the friction on the block. So this last sentence covers this point here. For a logical, relevant, internally consistent argument that addresses the required argument or the question asked and follows the guidelines described, the published requirements for the paragraph length response. Okay, so I don't know. This last point just means that it's like meets all of those. But yeah, I think I nailed the points. I want to read their example. Both objects start with the same gravitational potential energy as the object Earth system. The block Earth system is mechanical energy is converted into kinetic energy, and some of it is dissipated by friction as the block slides on the ramp. The cylinder Earth system's mechanical energy is transformed into translational kinetic energy, and some is transformed into rotational kinetic energy. The cylinder's final rotational kinetic energy is equal to the amount of the block Earth system's initial mechanical energy that is dissipated by friction. So I didn't explicitly say that the gravitation was being converted into um, uh, so I didn't actually say that the gravitational potential was being converted into kinetic energy. I, did, I failed to make that explicitly uh, correct in my statement. So I might have lost a point for that. This 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 correct statement about the energy transformations. I did talk about how it lost energy, but I didn't explicitly say that it got turned into translational kinetic energy. That was how you could infer the problem. So it's possible that I would have lost a couple uh, lost points on that for not making that explicit statement. Now, I implied it, right? Otherwise, some of this doesn't make sense if I don't talk about that conversion, but I didn't explicitly state it. So that would have been like mm, up in the air to the greater to probably decide whether or not I would deserve that point or those two, those two points if I made that correct. But note, there is no mention of arguing, of proving that the, the final uh, rotational uh, speed has to be the same. You're simply talking about the conversions because as we talked about before, and as I proved out, that you cannot prove that when something rolls down, it has to move at the same speed as something that slides down the block. I mean, if you've just done even one simple lab, you should know that this is just not possible to be true. I get a cylinder of a mass and I take a block with a mass and I slide them down the ramp. They're not going to go at the same speed at the bottom necessarily. It just depends on on not just if, if same mass and the same height and same surface, right? There's no way that they have to go at the same speed at the bottom. I could give you, I could, I could literally just make a lab demonstration, just show you that that's not possible. So anything where you tried to prove torque, blah, 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 all of that was completely outside the scope of this question. And I don't even know, like you, you, it, it, none of these points would have been even related to talking about that anyway. Okay. So that's kind of where I was. I think I had the right idea. Uh, like I said, I didn't explicitly make that statement, so I might have lost some points for that. Okay, cool. Uh, last question here. Number five. Um, A, for the correct expression of the torques from the way that the torques are mg2r0 and 1.5 mgr0, and then indicating two torques are exerted in opposite directions, which I did with the subtraction here. And so the net torque is 0.5r0 m0g. Okay. Example response looks almost looks perfectly right. Other than I had the orientations backwards, but this doesn't matter. Okay, correct answer for this one is angular acceleration. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. Example for an explanation, the object exerts a larger torque than object two. Object one is twice as far from the object. Okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, net torques in counterclockwise direction. I made that statement. Uh, I don't know if you have to say like one exerts a larger torque. That's es essentially the same as saying the net torque. So uh, I would assume that I would probably get credit for that, but I didn't make that like, I didn't say like explicitly why is this torque bigger than that one? Just that the torque is in that direction. Um, B, opposite directions. Okay, I, uh, angular velocity. Okay, so what do they say in there? Objects exert torques in opposite directions. Object one exerts large torques. So object one determines the net torque direction. When the torque from object one removed, the net torque and angular acceleration switch direction, becoming clockwise of the torque from object two. The angular velocity does not change direction immediately. It's still counterclockwise. 
Okay, angular velocity of the clock, the clock object has been falling. When the stand is got next door clockwise, alpha is clockwise. Okay, so I think I explained that reasonably well. I mean, it, it, I, I think I was getting a little tired on the fifth question, and I was probably a little sloppy. Um, that's good here. Okay, cool. I got a lot of questions about this one. Look at their graph. Their graph is upside down compared to mine. Okay, so what do they say? For a linear graph between zero and TC with an initial angular velocity of zero and a non-zero slope, one point, the slope can be positive or negative, okay? Because the, it is not automatic that counterclockwise has to be positive direction, okay? That depends on how you orient it, okay? And I, I, I can make another video that gets into it. It has to do with what the direction of the torque vector actually is and whether you say out of this page so counterclockwise is positive whether the out of the page is considered the positive direction that depends technically on whether which way you say x is positive which way is y is positive that orients the z direction blah 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 there's a lot of things they could say about why it might have to be counterclockwise but regardless if they don't tell you a direction in principle any any direction can be positive so i have a slope okay for it's a linear graph and then a change in the sign of the slope at t equals tc. So I have a negative slope goes a positive slope. They have a positive slope goes negative slope. No dot discontinuity. All they actually cared about was the change of the slope, not that the it was like three x the slope or anything that I was saying, which I realize is not exact. Just that there was a change in the sign and the slope. That's all they were looking for. They weren't even looking at anything specific about how steep the slope were. Just that there was a change in sign. So. There you have it. I think I did pretty well. Obviously, I don't think I did perfect. I made mistakes as I did the test. Okay, so you, these are all with my corrections. But I think overall, like, the answers I, I think I provided were, were reasonable and pretty good and had the right idea for most of them. So hope that was helpful. I hope uh, if you guys took the last year's exam and you're doing this, this could be – you could be studying for this year's exam – uh, the 2022 exam, or if you guys are revisiting from last year, or your teacher just curious about what my thoughts are on the, the solution. Either way, but um, I hope I, I felt pretty good about my answers and the solution kind of like were very similar to, I think, a lot of things that I did. So yeah. All right. Thanks.